Well, astonish you, it's magical and casual. Actual but classical, practical and factual. Today, I'm here to talk to you about oil, or as they used to say, black gold, Texas tea, and all those good old things that the Beverly Hillbillies used to spout on about. Now you may think that you know absolutely everything there is to know about oil, where it comes from, and what it is. And if that's the case, then I would advise you to turn this off now, because your worldview is probably going to be shaken. And I would advise you definitely not to view the second part of this video because it's going to be a two-parter. There's a lot of information to cover. So let's start off. We're going to start off ooh, way, way back in time. Um, thousands and thousands of years ago, when people knew there were these things called tar sands and tar pits, there's still one, around, one or two around today actually, there's the Labrea Pits, as we know about, in California, and um, that's a tar pit. It basically is a, a seepage of crude oil to the surface. And there are tar sands out in most deserts, like the Maghrib. And ancient peoples knew about these, and they knew that what was in there was valuable and useful for certain skin conditions and uh, you could set light to it and it would burn forever or until you dumped enough sand on it to starve it of oxygen the flames went out and beyond that no real use for the stuff until the late victorian period when we started finding all sorts of industrial uses for oil and people started to go looking for it and eventually the first oil well was drilled and we all know what happened next. It's a gusher. Loads of high pressure oil whoosh from a very shallow field actually in Texas. And so everyone started using oil all of a sudden. And they started exploring and looking for more oil. But along the way they made some false assumptions and some very drastic errors. And these have been maintained, in fact, they form the basis of all the lies that we are told about oil today. Now, naturally, they wanted to find out where this oil stuff came from. So they started investigating what came out of the holes that they drilled that produced oil. And almost invariably, you got fossils. I thought, whoa, this is good. So obviously, oil have something to do with fossils? Well, yes and no. The fact is that you can drill almost anywhere and bring up fossils. Um, it's not really an indicator. And so people started calling oil a fossil fuel because they kind of assumed that this is what happened. That um, along came some sort of natural event, flattened a forest, and the forest turns into coal and from coal we know we can get oil, we can get tar, we can get gas and it was a natural assumption to make um, that this is where all the oil on the planet came from. Unfortunately it was a rather bad assumption. Now in the 1950s some scientists started to worry a bit. There is quite an apocryphal tale of an MRT um, geologist who did some sums and um, plaintively wrote this letter um, basically saying that in order to produce the amount of, of oil that uh, the world had consumed by then, and this was mid-1950s, if all the animals and uh, forests and so on had the same sort of oil content as a whale, which is obviously a very oily mammal, uh, we extract things from whales today and use them in cosmetics and for all sorts of things. If that was the case, then you would need a weight of whales equivalent to the planet Mars, um, which he thought wasn't actually very a very practical idea. And therefore he was starting to think that maybe just maybe oil wasn't 
a fossil fuel. And uh, sure enough, he got stamped on and disappeared and his um, letter basically got relegated to legendary status, shall we say. And, well, okay, these things happen. But then some other people started thinking and they looked at coal. Because previously what had always been thought is that somehow the oil got squeezed out of the coal, it went down um, underground fissures and so on and so forth and wound up in a place where it couldn't travel anymore and this was an oil field. It was basically formed by the fact the oil was all caught as it ran downhill. There's a few problems with that which I'll go into in a minute. So this was what people were thinking um, until a uh, geologist actually did some sums with a petrochemist and uh, they discovered that the amount of tar and oil that you get in a coal field per square meter looked down from the top is very very nearly exactly the same as you would get in a square meter of forest um, practically sweet FA actually certainly not enough to have all this oil trickling all over the place and collecting in vast um, billion barrel oil fields um, no way Jose and this research too was quietly sat on for a few years uh, because the oil companies had decided something they decided for marketing purposes the oil had to be marketed as black gold yes it's this stuff that is incredibly expensive very difficult to get and oh by the way there's only so much of it and we're going to run out of it pretty soon so the prices are, are very justifiable and of course they made trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars providing us with oil so we've looked at the places where yeah some oil comes from but most oil doesn't so where does oil really come from and I'll be going over that in part two but let me leave you with a bit of a thought what do you always get in an oil field think of the things that you always get there's always problems with water um, there's a lot of water underground lots of water underground in fact there's far more water underground than we ever thought of. Um, a lot of it isn't in a form we would recognise as water because of this extreme temperatures and pressures that there are below ground but water it is nevertheless you could pump it out depressurise it and you would have water maybe or maybe not drinkable I don't know but certainly water. And the other thing you get is methane and methane occurs in huge abundance on this planet there's much more of it than people realise and it's not all produced by McDonald's cows farting slowly in South America. Some of it is produced in some other strange way which we'll also go over in part two because it's part of the story of oil. So you think about all these things that you find with oil. Hmm. Yeah. Now in order to understand what I'm going to talk about in part two you need to know just a tiny bit of chemistry. Well, it's not really chemistry. It's just basically what molecule, molecules look like. <coughs> now, to start with, we've got methane. Four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom. And then you've got ethane, which is very similar. Propane, butane, pentane, and so on. You can get very, very long chains of these. And most of the chemicals, most of the chemical content of crude oil are in fact these compounds called alkanes. Now in addition we have paraffins. Well, paraffin is just a very, very long alkane, basically. Um, branched paraffins and you can see really they're all based on methane that's been modified and folded and you've got naphthene, you've got 
aromatic chemicals with the benzene ring and so on and so forth and really all of these can be made from ethane which which is my point methane ethane can make all of these now I'm going to be talking a little bit about catalysts as well now these are the transition metals in red and the catalysts that are useful um, in the sort of reactions that we're looking at are around here platinum palladium nickel cobalt uh, can't remember what RH is but I'm sure someone will tell me and iridium and those are the sort of catalysts that we're talking about and if those metals are present even in tiny amounts they will speed up these reactions that can make oil.